I'm here today with uh, my partner, Dave Yanofsky, who works for ConnectEd, and he's going to talk just a little bit about what ConnectEd is. Sure. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. So as Emily said, I'm the director of media and youth development for ConnectEd. We are a nonprofit based in Berkeley. We work throughout the state around a high school reform approach called linked learning, what used to be called multiple pathways. We are working um, in kind of a demonstration area right now with nine different districts throughout the state, from Sacramento down to LA Unified and, and Long Beach and Pasadena and Oakland and um, Porterville and a couple others. And essentially what link learning is, is the blending of what used to be these two tracks between college or career. And so it really melds the academic with the, the CTE side. And it, by definition, brings a lot of linkages out to business and community and back into the school around work-based learning. Um, there's a lot big emphasis on integrated instruction, connecting classes across the subject areas. And there is a career theme embedded in each of those pathways, whether it's biomedical and health science, or in this case, digital media arts, or arts, media, and entertainment, um, engineering and architecture. And so we're working with schools and districts around link learning to implement that with a lot of professional development, technical assistance, and also curriculum. And um, EDC has been a great partner with us, not just on the um, arts, media, and entertainment side, but we're also working with them on law and justice curriculum as well. Great. So uh, that's a little bit about who we are, and I then wanted to find out a little bit of um, who you guys are. Uh, so could you just raise your hand if you're a high, high school teacher who uh, teaches fine arts in a traditional high school? Okay. Uh, what about media teachers working in a traditional high school? Oh. Middle, school. middle school. Okay. Uh, fine arts or media teachers working in middle school? Okay, a couple of you, great. Um, any media teachers who are working in uh, pathway or academy model school? Okay. Um, any uh, administrators in the audience? Great, welcome. Anyone whose category I didn't mention, just out of curiosity? Yeah. Teach writing. Teach writing, okay, great. We, have, um, we will talk a little bit about the interdisciplinary connections that we make in this curriculum, so hopefully you will uh, also take something away. Um, and now that we know a little bit more about you, uh, just to sort of get the blood flowing and get conversation going after lunch, we'd like to give you just a couple minutes to get to know one another. So um, if you wouldn't mind standing up uh, and pairing up with somebody that you don't know and just spending each 30 seconds talking about the following questions. Um, fantastic. Thank you for sharing and uh, thank you for talking to one another. Um, so just to give you a sense of what we're going to do during the session, um, I'm going to give you a short overview of the digital media arts curriculum. We're going to focus today in particular on the Foundations and Visual Arts, which is the first course. Uh, for those of you who are also interested in uh, media and digital design, I'll be talking about that course in more depth tomorrow. Uh, we're going to talk about the DMA program of study a little bit. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about curriculum integration for those academic teachers. And we're also going to do a few activities from the units. So what is digital media arts? Um, it's a sequence of uh, two years worth of material designed for either 9th and 10th or 10th and 11th graders uh, that's designed to be part uh, of a three to four year total program of study uh, for schools who are interested in uh, integrating arts and media career awareness into their schools. So whether you're a pathway school or an academy or you're just you know, working in a traditional high school and you're interested in bringing more information uh, about arts and media careers or, or just giving you know, your activities maybe some real world relevance. Uh, those are all uh, avenues that we would suggest for, for using the curriculum. Um, there are, as I said, uh, two years worth of material. The first year is Foundation and Visual Arts, uh, which focuses a lot on art fundamentals, uh, visual literacy, personal expression. And then the second year material, uh, Foundations in Media and Digital Design, which is split into two courses, uh, an audio video course, which is a semester long, and an animation and gaming course, which is also a semester long. And then in addition, we have uh, 16 units uh, in math, history, and English and, sci English and science, and those are integrated units that are designed to uh, reinforce what students are learning in their uh, art classes, um, help them see how academic subject area material can be used uh, in the scope of arts and media careers. And I'll talk a little bit more about integration in a minute. So, um, 
Art, visual literacy, storytelling, what is that stuff and why is it important? Um, our ideal is for this student or someone like her who might have these questions uh, after completing two years of the course material that I'm going to talk with you about today and tomorrow um, to know uh, why uh, fundamental art skills are important, why it's important to, for example, uh, know about the elements of art and principles of design, uh, why it's important to know how to be a storyteller. Uh, and especially if that student is interested in going on into, you know, she's maybe, she or he is maybe thinking about a career in the arts, but, you know, even if they're going to go on to other careers as well, we think that uh, the kinds of skills and information that they're learning uh, in these two courses will serve them well as they go on uh, to high school and beyond. So we designed uh, the curriculum with a group of advisors who we've drawn from uh, industry, from uh, post-secondary institutions, and also uh, from high school uh, teachers as well. Uh, and the materials were all uh, vetted and piloted by high school teachers. Uh, and you know, when we brought together this advisory committee, we asked them, you know, what is it that is important for students to know uh, when they graduate from high school, whether they're going to go on to post-secondary education, two or four year college or university, whether they're going to go into an entry-level career in the arts, or you know, if they're going to go on and, and do something completely different. What is it that we want them to, to know and be able to do? Um, and consistently, we heard um, sort of these sets of skills. So they need to have visual literacy, uh, which is something that we focus on particularly in this foundation and visual arts course, uh, artistic ability and uh, creative expression, and the ability to tell a story, which is really something that sort of runs throughout all of the curriculum materials. Uh, and and then in addition, there are these qualities that we want all of our students to have, whether they're going to go into the arts or something completely different. Um, we want them to be able to solve problems, be critical thinkers, communicate well with others, uh, not just their peers, but also an adult audience as well. Uh, and uh, we want them to be able to work well in teams. So those are all uh, skills and qualities that we've tried to build into the curriculum. And as uh, Ward Kimball, who uh, was an animator for Disney, said, uh, the first important step is art training. Um, and you know, he was speaking long before the advent of 3D animation. Uh, but what he said still remains the case. Uh, and we heard this you know, from people who are working in the industry now, that regardless of what technology you're going to go on and use, you know, if you're going to be working in uh, the gaming industry, uh, or if you're going to be an animator, if you're going to work in the movies, you still need to have sort of fundamental sense of how to make a good piece of art. Um, you need to understand the elements of art and principles of design. You need to be able to draw. Um, those are just fundamental skills that if you're going to go on and work in the industry, that it's important to have. Uh, so that's really the focus of the first year course. Uh, so in addition to developing the course so it's got qualities uh, that are important to people in the industry, uh, we also have designed it to be project-based, which I'm sure um, most or all of you are already doing in your classrooms since most our classrooms are very project-centered. Uh, we also have a career exploration strand uh, in all of the units in the courses. We recommend ways for you to bring people into the classroom or ways for you to get your students out into the community uh, because we think that that real world contact with professionals is an important part of what students are learning. Uh, and then we also give them tools for analysis, for learning, analysis, research. Um, you know, it's interesting, uh, we use the uh, critical response process and it seems very similar actually to the protocol that you were l using earlier today. So I think that's sort of a nice interesting tie. Um, we teach students how to critique their own work, critique the work of others, and then also the work of uh, professional artists. So the program of study, uh, as I said, it's a three or four year program, uh, which starts with this foundations in visual arts that we're talking about today, uh, goes on to include the foundation in media and digital design course, uh, and then these integrated units, and then also an elective sequence. So if your students were engaging in some kind of pathway, they would start with these two foundation courses and then move on uh, to study more in depth specifics. So for example, uh, this is a course of study for a student who is interested in animation. And you can see they start in the uh, ninth grade year with foundations in visual arts, move on to foundations in media and digital design one and two, and then explore um, animation further in depth in their 11th and 12th grade years. 
Uh, and these uh, programs of study are all designed also to meet uh, the UC A to G requirement system. So a student who took this set of courses would be eligible for UC. Uh, and you can see that you can also start this program in the 10th grade, so it's designed to be flexible in that way. Um, I'm not going to go into this program of study in too much detail, in part because I know some of you are um, elementary and middle school teachers and it won't be relevant too much, but uh, for those of you who might be interested, uh, if you go to the DMA website, and I'll give you the link at the end, uh, there's a program of study that gives you quite a bit of detail about how that might work in your school. So I talked a little bit about integration. Um, we have designed these uh, units in math, English, uh, social studies, and science to be models uh, for uh, schools and teachers who are interested in integrating uh, work across the school and the curriculum. And we do this because we think, as I said, that it's important for students to, in their academic subject area classes, um, understand why those skills are relevant. You know, why is trigonometry important? Um, well, it's something that you might be able to use later on if you're going to be an animator. Uh, so we've designed uh, discrete units in these subject areas, and they can be used in a variety of ways. They're really flexible. So um, a career teacher might be teaching them, incorporating them into their classroom. Um, an academic teacher uh, might teach them individually, uh, maybe in concert with the arts teacher, or you could have a school-wide project where all of the different disciplines are working together on one project simultaneously. Um, and you can see here, this is the um, Foundations in Visual Arts course, the units. And you can see that we have connected uh, each of these integrated units to uh, various units in the Foundations course. Uh, and there are groups of them so that it's possible to, as I said, do a multidisciplinary project across the school if you'd like. So the course that I'm going to talk about today is the Foundation of Visual Arts course. Um, this course has been approved uh, in the UC system as an F course. Uh, Menachee High School in the Porterville School District uh, put the application forward and it was approved. Um, and if anybody is interested in learning more about that process or uh, wants materials that might help them get through it, talk to me at the end because uh, we can certainly help you out with that. Um, and these are the seven units in the course, four in the first semester, three in the second. Uh, and as I said, this is really a foundations course, so students are learning the fundamentals. They're learning how to draw, how to sketch, they're learning how to paint, uh, they're learning a little bit of sculpture. They're learning the elements of art and principles of design. So we are, the thing that's different about the curriculum is that we're wrapping all of this, which I'm sure many of you are doing in your classrooms already, uh, in this uh, career awareness uh, mantle so that students are really in an authentic way learning about these careers, learning how their work uh, is applicable in those careers should they go on into the industry. Um, and these are the framing questions for the course. Um, and I know that uh, this, the theme of the colloquium is about inspiring voice, and uh, this course in particular really is about helping students to find their voice. So what is your vision? How do you see the world? How does the world see you? How does the world influence your vision, and how do you transform your vision to action? These are all uh, questions that students return to again in the course, and uh, we really are encouraging students to, to find their own voice, to tell their own stories. So uh, I wanted to talk a little bit more about Unit 3. Uh, we're actually going to be doing a couple of activities from this particular unit, uh, which is the third one. Uh, it comes in the first semester after students have had uh, a couple of units where they've um, learn some basic fundamental drawing skills. Uh, this unit project, uh, they draw storyboards for a movie documenting uh, one person's story within their community. So the idea is that they uh, choose a community member, they go out, they conduct research, they interview them, and then they develop an idea for a movie based on that person's life. Um, and we encourage throughout uh, all of the courses students to get out into the community um, and then also to be, tell as I said, telling their own stories. So um, this is one way that they do it. And optionally, they also um, create a page from a graphic novel, um, reinforcing those drawing skills. 
So the art concepts that they're looking at in this unit, um, introduction to drawing for storytelling. So as I said, they've got some basic drawing skills. And in this unit, they look at, you know, how can I use what I've learned about drawing in order to tell a story? So they're looking at uh, graphic novels. They're looking at comic books. Uh, they're looking at uh, storyboards. We'll talk about more in a minute. Um, they also do a comparison of art materials uh, from the past with uh, materials that are used in the present. Throughout all of the units, we really have a focus on um, looking at art of various kinds, everything from fine art through media. Uh, they do a lot of analysis. Uh, so in this unit, we focus on how uh, folk arts in particular have been used to tell stories. So quilts, totem poles, uh, pottery, baskets. They, they look at those examples of how stories are told uh, in other ways in various cultures. Um, they're also learning, as you can see, some fundamental art skills, and then they're also being introduced to some uh, design principles, balance, movement, and so forth. Okay, so we are going to do a uh, short activity from the unit. Uh, and it says Hellboy, but uh, I couldn't quite get the projector bright enough, so we're actually going to be watching a clip from the X-Men, so ignore that little <laughs> poster there. Um, and when we watch the clip, I want you to uh, just keep in the back of your mind these questions. So, what visual elements is the director using to tell the story? Um, how does the filmmaker use the elements of art and principles of design? And you know, what could your students learn by doing this little bit of analysis? And I should say, um, you know, as I mentioned, one of the things that they look at in this unit is comic books. So uh, in the unit, they look at a comic book, uh, for example, X-Men, and then they're also looking at the movie uh, that is based on that comic book. So it's a way for them to compare how work is done in two different media, how stories are told in two different media. So if somebody could hit the lights, I'm just going to watch a short clip. And this is without the sound. So what visual elements was the director using to help tell the story? Or could you tell what was going on even though there was no sound? Okay. 
So uh, how how did you know? The fire. The fire. Okay. So but and uh, so visually the the color of the fire, the the flame standing out. Okay. What else? The emotional responses on the characters' faces. Absolutely. So the um, the way that they were the acting that they were doing essentially. Yes. Lighting values, dark lines. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It's very good. Yes. The cutting and editing, speed of the shots. Yes, absolutely. Um, the the editor is arranging things in sequence in a way that you can tell what's going on. Um, and you could also extend that and talk about um, things like close-ups versus medium and wide shots, um, telling you things about the the characters and the action as well. Um, anything else? Great. Um, so this is, as I said, you know, sort of an introductory activity that we do with students at the beginning of the unit to get them thinking a little bit about how stories are told visually, particularly uh, in film. Um, and it's something that we want them to keep in the back of their minds, and you should maybe keep in the back of your mind uh, as uh, we uh, move through this next activity, um, which will be a little bit of what they do for their unit project. So as I said um, at the beginning of uh, talking about Unit 3, the project for this particular unit is uh, creating a storyboard. Uh, do any of you use uh, storyboards in your classes? Great. Okay, so a couple of you do. Um, for those of you who haven't and maybe you're not super familiar, um, storyboards uh, are used in a variety of media productions. And I actually think that they were um, invented by Disney uh, in the earlier part of the last century when they were working on um, animated movies as a way to sort of block out what was going on before they brought the action uh, to life uh, on the screen. Uh, and similarly for live action movies, uh, storyboarding is used as a way to visualize the shots uh, before production begins so that the director and others working on the set can sort of visualize and see what's going to happen. Um, storyboards will often have a central image, usually one image uh, per shot. Uh, and then there's often some information below the image uh, about dialogue, about what the camera might be doing. So if the camera is panning, if it's a close-up or a wide shot. Um, and they proceed in sequence so that if you're looking at a series of storyboards, you get some sense of what the finished product might look like. Um, and what I would like to have you all do is to spend a little bit of time um, working on the storyboarding activity yourselves, just to get a taste of what students do uh, in the units. I think that we all learn better by doing than by standing here and listening to me talk. Um, so what I would like you to do is work in groups of two or three. This is a pretty small group, so maybe, maybe just a couple or three of you can get together. Um, and think for a minute about a personal story or anecdote, or maybe the story of somebody that you know that you think would make a good short film or even a movie. Um, and then share that idea with your partner team um, and choose one of those stories uh, to develop. And then you will interview that team member a little bit about their story and work together uh, to develop a storyboard for one scene from your movie about that moment in the person's life. Um, so we are going to pass out um, some examples of storyboards. Dave's passing those around. Um, and this is just a little template. We don't actually want you to use this because it's too small, but um, there you go. And I will come around with art materials in a minute, but if you want to uh, think for a minute and, and then pair up and, and start talking, that would be great. A woman driving through the desert, and as you can see, there's a little plane far ahead, and as she's speeding, the, the plane's catching up to her, and then all of a sudden, you see this dark uh, uh, thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and a husband and wife have a 15-year wedding anniversary. They get on a plane to Vegas. Checking into the hotel, get a phone call. Your house is on fire. <laughs> so, so this is not Vegas now. House on fire. Uh, engine 32. Uh, the waiter.
wait at the airport to fly back home. Mm. And two years later, I knew him. Oh. 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 Great. Thank you so much for sharing, everyone. Um, great work, uh, some interesting stories. Uh, and. I loved seeing just the way, the different ways in which each of you were um, visualizing the, the framings that you were coming up with, the different ways that you were thinking about it. Um, and those are exactly the kinds of uh, things that we want our students to be uh, learning is, you know, figuring out how to think visually. So this is, um, you know, that's sort of what the exercise is geared um, toward. I wanted to say a couple of things that I didn't say at the beginning. I had a few questions as I was walking around. Um, good questions. So. Um, the curriculum is available for free. There's no cost to it. Uh, all you have to do is register on the website, uh, which I will share at the end of the presentation. And also there's a little uh, piece of paper by the creamer and sugar back there that talks a little bit about the curriculum. And it's also got uh, both the DMA website and also the Connected Studios website that Dave is going to talk about in a minute. Um, it's also designed to be really flexible. Uh, this first year focuses on visual arts, as I've said, but it also can be adapted to be used in a wide range of situations. So um, one of our pilot teachers the first year was a photography teacher, and she adapted a lot of the projects to be used uh, to teach photography. Um, there are suggestions throughout the units if you're using technology on ways that you can integrate technology. So there are a the number of different ways that you can use these projects. Uh, and the curriculum as a whole is also designed to be flexible. Uh, you know, it's great if there are teachers who are out there adapting um, both courses as they're written, but we also recognize that you know your classroom situation better than anybody. Uh, and if there are different things that you want to do with it, it's designed for you to sort of, you know, use what you can and, and adapt it to your own situation. Is there, does anyone else have other questions uh, before I pass things over to Dave? Okay. Um, and just a quick background on myself, and Emily did not mention her background, but she's a, a working artist. I'm a a filmmaker myself and a lot of the folks who went who are kind of part of the advisory board and the committee for the creation of this curriculum were working professionals um, not to say that you know we we got it right right out of the the gate but it was very much informed by industry which is a theme that I, um, I'm going to touch on here just with connected studios so what is connected studios it's an online platform that we've created um, really to uh, connect teachers and students with industry professionals um, to help advise on curriculum, projects that you want to create, but also to review and critique student work, to get involved with students. We work, as I mentioned, throughout the state. One of the districts we work in is Porterville. I don't know if you're familiar with Porterville. It's in the Central Valley in between Bakersfield and Fresno. Not a lot of multimedia production happening there. So for kids in a digital media arts pathway, school focus there, they don't have, there are limited opportunities for them to connect with industry professionals. So this is a way for them to do this virtually, to connect um, and, and kind of benefit from the expertise of a filmmaker in LA or San Francisco or New York or, or even, um, you know, Tokyo for that matter. So um, Studios is a, is a password protected site. There's a lot of security that we've built in. This is really a social networking site, but for education, for, um, to really support uh, the academic work that the students are doing. It's not their Facebook, it's not MySpace, it's not, you know, they were hanging out with their buddies over the weekend. It is their LinkedIn site, their professional oriented site. You can see on the right hand side the quick links. Everybody in the system has those, so it's an inbox calendar, a profile, ability to handle files, and also a portfolio. Um, and again, it kind of really was developed in conjunction with or really informed both ways with the curriculum because as Emily and her team were creating the curriculum, we were very much thinking about um, the extensions within studios. And in fact, when you're going through the curriculum, you'll see kind of the little icon up there at different points, which indicates that this is a natural place to jump over to studios, whether it's media resources or to connect with an industry professional, et cetera. So what you're seeing here is kind of the look from uh, uh, somebody who's logged in. And this is kind of where the curriculum lives right now. These are the first uh, eight or so kind of subunits for the first year course. Over the summer, we're going to be adding in pretty much all of the content for the first two year courses. Um, and so uh, again, you can preview it. You can see what lesson plans there are. If you were in another pathway, you could jump over to say biomedical and health science. We have about 10 integrated units in there, engineering. And we're working with a couple partners over the summer to really enlarge that database. So kind of 
if you logged in now, you would see um, a, a relatively kind of uh, um, subset of what the overall resources are going to look like um, by the end of the summer. Um, <clears throat> So kind of jumping into what a project would look like, and you see at the bottom over there my project. So in this case, we're in crime time, which is the bottom one. You can see at the top here what this is. is a, it's a forensics project, an integrated forensics project, actually a real one that was done by the um, School of Digital Media and Design down in San Diego. And um, just to give you a sense of what they were doing and, and really help to reinforce what Connect Ed um, talks about when we're talking about integrated instruction, um, so the kids were creating a website. That was a deliverable. These were all 10th graders. Every 10th grader was doing this, working in small teams. And they were creating a website to teach 7th graders about forensics. So in math class, they were using ratios to extrapolate and figure out somebody's height based on their footprint. In science, they were looking at DNA and, and uh, blood typing. Um, in language arts, they created a suspect statement and then created a whole scenario that was kind of the implementation, you know, that was a content for the, the video game. And then in, in history, they were looking at the role that forensics has played, say, in the, the trial, the Nuremberg trials and so forth. So it's a way to wrap all the content into one integrated unit, reinforced throughout the classes, so when students come in and out of math and go into science, there's a nice cross-cutting. It's not over the course of the semester. In this case, um, it probably was about a four-week period where they overlapped, and not every day. Maybe science did two or three lessons, math did two or three lessons. Um, but again, it's a way to reinforce this. So just kind of every project has these components. Looking across the top, you see a project wall. <clears throat> um, we're, not, we're not shy. We, sh we steal shamelessly wherever we can. Um, and for those of you familiar with Facebook, it's going to look very familiar. So these are the folks who are part of the project. We can see three industry professionals, four teachers, and uh, you know, a couple dozen students. So everybody's connected now. Um, and they can start to uh, share information. They can upload. They can, a teacher can post assignments uh, or reminders. Um, Teachers, all four teachers can have a common access to the lesson plans, media resources, student handouts, and then a project gallery as the students are creating work. Um, you can publish that to a student gallery. Well, actually, two levels, a project gallery, and then at the high level is a student gallery. Um, but this is very much about reinforcing 21st century skills, really giving kids an opportunity to create work and celebrate that work and to be in dialogue with each other. And also, very importantly, to connect with industry pros. So you see these three filmmakers waiting there for the students to, to, to show them their work. And we built in some annotation tools for video. A uh, professional or teacher, for that matter, would watch the kid's video, stop it, and put a comment in there, and it's tied to time code. So when the student is watching that video back, it stops exactly where that comment was, and there's a little text overlay. So it remo removes a lot of the ambiguity about, you know, what are they referring to? Where was that comment directed? For all non-video, we built in essentially a virtual post-it note. So whether it's a PowerPoint or an image or a Word doc, you know, you or the industry pro can go and leave those comments. And I'll show you in a sec kind of what the, the matrix looks like, how you would manage that. And then if you don't have an industry pro but you want to connect with one, you can just go ahead and click um, indus add industry pro and um, it will take you to uh, essentially this page where we have we've seeded this with about, I don't know, 40 or 50 industry professionals in the different industries. Um, they are, when they sign in, they're kind of tick off a series of items that they're available to do, host a class visit uh, or an internship, um, review and critique student work, help with curriculum development. So you can kind of go in and see what they're available to do, and then you can invite them to a project. They would get an email saying, hey, Dave's invited you to join this project. If they say yes, then um, they become part of the member in that group. So you also see these student groups. So you have the ability to break your larger class into, into subgroups. And then what happens is uh, each one of those subgroups has a virtual workspace. It's essentially a wall, but we call it a virtual workspace, where now if you have three, three students, one industry pro, and one teacher, now you are all part of that subgroup. And, and basically, you have the ability to, again, upload work, um, be in conversation with folks. So this is the assignment matrix. You can see that in this case, the teacher set up three assignments, a logo, a GUI, a GUI, and, a, and an animation. And so you can't see it's at the bottom of the page, but these um, colored dots are, represent different stages in the workflow. So um, I believe yellow is um, when the teacher gets, when the student has submitted the, the, the particular file. And by the way, I could just click on any of these, and, and the file would open up with the meta information. But yellow indicates that the student has sent it um, uh, uh, submitted a piece of work to a particular assignment. Um, green means that it has been sent from, an from the teacher to the industry pro. I think red means it's been returned from the industry 
pro to the teacher, and then pink is it's been returned back to the student. So we've done that very intentionally. We do not want to have industry pros and students communicating with each other without a teacher being in the loop, okay, for, for security and, I would say, relatively obvious reasons. Um, that's not to say that we don't want to go down that road, but we're doing it very carefully. Right now, we want to make sure that the communication, the collaboration is very structured. So all the communication that would happen between an industry pro and a student um, would be either at the public wall um, through this annotation feedback or an inbox, and if they're communicating through the inbox, the teacher gets CC'd. So in any one of those three possibilities, the teacher is always going to be kind of the, the middle point uh, person. Um, so again, it just gives you the ability to um, very easily see where your kids are and to be able to move those off on um, the pieces of work into the, in, to the industry professionals. Um, this is just the, the file, so you can see in this case, um, uh, uh, these are kind of files for projects that I've created, and then you have the ability, students as well, you see the submit button, feedback, delete, so that file structure moves all the way down. If I just hit digital storytelling, that page would refresh, and all the files associated with digital storytelling are there. But we think it's a, a, a pretty nice and easy way to manage files and also to, to deal with the submission. Um, so this is free right now, um, and we don't necessarily have plans to charge for it for the schools and the districts that ConnectEd is working with. Um, we're still working through some of the business development implications. My, my suggestions within the organization is to essentially make uh, the basic set of, of tools and resources, which would include everything that I've shown you, free and available to anybody um, who's working, you know, kind of particularly in the high school space. The middle school and then elementary school gets a little challenging around FERPA and um, getting uh, parental release forms. So we're kind of very cautiously moving down to middle school. But the goal is to have students create their accounts in middle school and have a persistent digital locker all the way through high school and even in post-secondary. We know that what's happening is kids are coming in and, hey, you know, here are, my, here are my three projects and then the teacher has to burn a DVD and then the next year starts all over again, let alone when you're going from middle to high school or high school to post-secondary. We know that as kids are going, you know, as the years progress, we're going to be looking at authentic assessments and college admissions and so forth are going to be looking for what can you do, let me see evidence of your work. And we think this is going to be a powerful way for them not to just show their final work, but to show those interactions with industry pros, how they iterated, how they took that feedback and incorporated it and made their work stronger. So um, I believe that's the last slide. Um, that's the website, connectedstudios.org. Every school needs a code. Um, we set up a code on our end, one for students and one for teachers, and that gets communicated out. I'm happy to set up codes for you guys. Um, for high school, I'm also happy to do it for middle school, but again, for middle school teachers, we need to have a conversation about uh, getting parental release forms. I will, again, just re re kind of reference back that for folks who are outside of these nine districts, it's going to be free and open for you. I can't make promises about, um, you know, what's going to happen, I think, at least through this next school year. And then, again, my pitch is to make make those basic set of resources available. I'm not the boss of my organization, so I don't have final say. But um, there's one other piece that I would just reference is a curriculum mapping tool. Um, and again, with the idea of being able to do these integrated projects, essentially what it is is it's a tool that allows individual teachers to go in and map your individual scope and sequence, your kind of what you're going to be covering over the year, the semester, the quarter, the month. And it's, you put in topics, we have all the standards pre-populated for all the content standards, all the CTE, and then even the common core are laid in. And so you can basically associate your standards with your topics, and then you can go one layer down with what we call performance measures. Really, what do you want the students to be able to do in that particular activity? And then you can merge that map with your colleagues, and you can start to see those cross-curricular connections. If I'm a, uh, a language arts teacher, I may not know biology, I may not know history, what my colleagues are covering, so I can see basically what they're going to be doing, and then that gives me um, some, some ground to start to think about where those cross-curricular connections are. Um, so that's probably all, all, all I'll say for now. Um, if you have questions, um, there's my email address. Feel free to um, send them over to me. In terms of being able to um, access the curriculum, uh, it's currently be point, being put onto the Connected Studios website, um, not quite all the way there yet. So if you'd like immediate access uh, to all of the courses, you can go to dma.edc.org um, and everything uh, is up there and available for you to look at. Just a really quick registration process and uh, then you have access to all of the materials.
So thanks so much for your time and your participation today. Uh, it was really good to, great to interact with all of you. Um, and if you have any questions, you know, feel free to come up to us after the session um, and ask away.